Hey guys, this is Karthik and I'm back with the second video for the Digit DP series. If you haven't watched the first video for the Digit DP series, which is the introduction to digit dynamic programming with a sample problem and uh, the definition of some of the terms that you need to know before solving any Digit DP problem, I strongly recommend that you subscribe to the channel. Oh yeah, of course, do that and also watch that video too. <laughs> so let's get started with the second problem for the series and this one is boring numbers from Google Kickstart round. This is the most recent Google Kickstart round. So this problem boring numbers, you can read it on your own once and then I'll start explaining. The problem says that you are given uh, an integer n, l and r and you would like to find out all the number integers, the count of integers from l to r so that the integers are boring. Okay, so the, the, the number of boring integers from l to r, that is what you would like to find out. Now what is a boring number? A boring number is any number whose all odd positions contain odd digits and even positions contain even digits and you would position uh, write the positions from left to right so for example if you have the have an integer 8 1 3 2 6 so this particular number is not boring and why is that so because this is position number 1 position 2 3 4 and 5 and you can see that at position 1 which is an odd position you have an even number even digit basically you would like to have at odd positions only odd digits and at even positions you would like to have even digits so for the example that they have given 1 4 7 8 you can see that the at the odd positions that is 1 and 3 you have odd digits that is 1 and 7 and at even positions 2 and 4 you have even di uh, digits 4 and 8 so this is a boring number you would like to count, count all the boring numbers and if you were to iterate from l to r then that would be big O of r minus l times you will have to check for every integer whether it is boring or not so let's just have an upper bound for that that is log log base 10 r this will be the time complexity if you do the brute force from l to r you iterate and for every number you check whether it is boring or not now if you look at the constraints the constraints are huge r is up to 10 power 18 see this brute force is definitely going to work for test set 1 but that's not what we are here for we are here for the test set 2 as well so this will not work because r is up to 10 power 18 we need to get rid of this factor here and of course we are going to use digit dynamic programming let's get started i recommend you to maybe wait for a minute think of some solution and then watch the video also if you are here for the premiere then let me know in the live chat if you are liking the video or not now from previous video we know that when you whenever you are trying to find out all count of numbers in the range l to r we break this problem to count of numbers in the range 0 to r and count of numbers in the range 0 to l minus 1 and we use these two results to evaluate the result for this one right this we already know let's just focus on evaluating the count of integers in the range 0 to r and our problem would be solved then so how do i actually evaluate the count of integers in the range 0 to r first now r is some n digit number maybe something like 8 1 7 3 2 okay it's an n digit number or for this example a 5 digit number and we would like to generate uh, or basically count all the n digit numbers that are less than or equal to r and are boring we would like to count that also we are considering 0 1 2 3 all these numbers as n digit numbers only so you will write 1 as this so it's a 5 digit number 1 is a 5 digit number here 0 is a 5 digit number and any other number is also a 5 digit number. We just need to ensure that we never exceed r and we also uh, basically are able to count all the boring numbers. Now to make sure that you never exceed r, we discussed the uh, concept of a tight variable. This tight variable is something that helps you ensure that you never exceed r, never ever. And if you don't understand the concept of a tight variable, I will definitely be explaining it here also. But if you watch the introductory video, it would be much more clear to you. And I think you'll be able to write the recurrence even on your own then. So let me define dp of n or maybe dp of i would be better. Doesn't make a difference though. So let's define dp of i as count of boring numbers, count of numbers with i digits count of i digit numbers count of numbers with exactly i digits yep 
uh, which are boring of course so count of boring numbers having i digits this is dp of i so dp of n the thing about dp of n so r had n digits if i find out dp of n then that would be all the boring numbers the count of all the boring numbers in the range 0 to 99999 these are n number of nines okay this is dp of n but we need to make sure that our number the count that we generate is for the numbers from 0 to r instead of this right so let's see how we can do that so basically whenever you are generating a number that is having n digits you're going to think about it in this way first of all you're going to be at a certain position you might have filled a few positions beforehand and you might be thinking about filling this position here right this is going to be your brute force kind of thing and this will help you think about the states you need to keep in your dp so when you're trying to fill this digit there are a few things that you need to know first you are trying to generate a boring number right that means that if this position is an odd position you need to make sure that you place only odd digits here if this position is an even position then you need to make sure that the number digits you put in here are all even that's for sure also how do you decide whether a position is even or odd you need to know that first now you cannot directly decide from like knowing that this is n digits you cannot directly decide what position you are currently at you need to know from where the number started because if the number was 1 2 3 3 5 in that case this particular position is an odd position because 1 2 3 and 4 and 5 so this particular position for this number is an odd position because you start position uh, counting the positions from left to right whereas for this particular number 0 1 2 3 3 maybe this position is not an odd position but an even position right this one is an even position so the positions will be decided once you actually start producing a number and you are basically done with putting the leading zeros as long as you are putting the leading zeros there is no odd or even position as such the positions start only and only once you have put at least one number that is a non-zero at least one digit that is a non-zero digit for example this one right and this one so as soon as you put one non-zero digit that is the point where your positions start and that first position will always be position number one and that is an odd position so this is an odd position this is an even position odd position even position odd position right and you need to make sure that if at every odd position you put in a zero uh, you put in an odd digit and at every even position you put in an even di even digit that's one thing that you need to make sure and the other thing that you need to make sure is that when you're putting a digit that digit should not exceed r or your overall number that you are generating should not exceed r and for that you have your tight variable the tight variable ensures that you never exceed the uh, number r you need to make sure that the number you are generating is less than equal to r so for that you have the tight, tight bound so we have noted down two three things that we will need to know one is uh, how many digits are there going to be there in the number so we are trying to generate all n digit numbers second thing we need to be sure that at even positions we put in even uh, numbers and at odd positions we put in odd numbers so you need to know whether this is an even position or odd position what kind of position is this right third thing you need to know uh, are you still putting in leading zeros because if you are still putting in leading zeros then there is no point of the, the position being an even or odd position since you haven't even started putting the zeros right so has the number started or am I still putting in leading zeros? So are you still putting leading zeros? If that is the case, this means the number hasn't even started yet and you can uh, continue putting on more leading zeros and there is no even odd position. And the first time you put in a number that is going to be an odd position and from there onwards you will have odd even odd even positions. But are you still putting in leading zeros? So 0001 is a valid number. But 0011 is not valid because this is position 1, this is position 2. You need to make sure that whether you are still putting in leading zeros or not. And then you need to check if you are not putting in leading zeros, what position is this, right? These are the things you need to be sure of.
ओके कूल डू आई नीड टू नो एनी थिंग एल्स द लास्ट थिंग आई नीड टू मेक श्योर इज दैट द नंबर दैट आई एम प्रोड्यूसिंग इज लेस देन इक्वल टू आर एंड फॉर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू यूज द टाइट वेरिएबल दिस टाइट हेल्प्स मी मेक श्योर दैट कैन आई पुट इन एनी डिजिट हेयर कैन आई पुट इफ लाइक कैन आई पुट नाइन हेयर कैन आई पुट अस एट हेयर और सेवन हेयर by comparing it with the corresponding digit of r right these are the things you need to be make sure you need to make sure that this particular digit does not exceed the digit at r if the tight is 1 so with this much information you are going to be able to come up with the dp state and the transitions and obviously the overall solution then so let's look at the dp state now so dp of n and what kind of position is this is this an even position so this is a boolean variable one if the current position is an even position or not otherwise zero so dp of n is it an even position uh i am i still putting in leading zeros so in that case regardless of what kind of position is this you can always go ahead and put one more zero because then that is basically you are still putting in the zeros of the start and you can come up with another zero here no problem so uh, am i still putting in leading zeros or am i done putting leading zeros so if you have seen at least one digit before to the left of the current position that was a non zero then leading will be zero and the final thing tight am i under a tight constraint is there a possibility that i might exceed r if i do something stupid in the future this is going to be my dp state and i'm going to come up with the recurrences now so instead of actually writing down the recurrence i'll just give you a basic idea so if this is an even position i could think of putting in the following digits 0 2 4 6 and 8 if this is an even position of course and i need to check what is uh, the tight bound if tight is 1 i need to make sure that the corresponding digit of r let's call it ub that the digit i put in at this position is less than equal to ub i need to make sure about that right because i don't want to exceed the tight i put in one digit at the current position and then i try to find out all the n minus 1 digit numbers so that now the position becomes odd because this previous position was an even position next position becomes an odd position and leading is of course zero because you have put uh, an even number and it since it was an even digit leading obviously becomes zero because initially this thing even will always be zero because the first position is going to be an odd position so leading is obviously zero because i have put a even digit the first digit will always be odd because you start numbering from 1 right and what about tight tight if tight was zero tight remains zero and if tight was 1 the only case in which tight stays one is that the digit i put at the previous position is exactly equal to the corresponding digit of r or ub that is ub so tight and tight equal equal to ub or the digit that i am placing sorry dig equal equal to ub this will be better understandable in the code in that case tight stays one and this is how you basically come up with the recurrences simply keep breaking the problem and try out all the digits at this position and keep taking these numbers adding them to the overall answer hopefully this thing is clear till here if it is not then in the coding part it will be much much more clear uh, let's uh, jump to the coding part already so this here is my template that i use for google kickstarter rounds this google simply prints this so it's useful let's build a solve function on straight forward yep what is the digit number i'm producing i want to produce all n digit numbers and then is this an even position am i still putting in leading zeros and what what more do i need to know uh let me just check whether i'm recording yep i'm recording <laughs> yeah so is this an even position is this uh, am i still putting in leading zeros or not and finally the boolean tight am i uh, is there a possibility that i might exceed r in the future so tight and also let's pass in the number r and i'll pass it in as a string although long long works i'll return a long long variable only since the numbers uh, the answer can be as large as 10 power 18 i guess right 
now I have, uh, I have all this information if n equals to 0 that means I'm trying to produce a zero digit number let's just return a one or should I I guess because it's kind of an empty number and I, I'll, I'll just agree to that if I read this straight this means I've uh, generated a boring number in the past only then do I read this particular straight so let's just return a one for the base case if n equals to 0 next up is what if this is an even position versus what if this is an odd, posi odd position so this is an even position so if this is an even position then leading is obviously zero because otherwise this would have been an odd position initially the positions will always be odd i'm going to iterate from uh, for all the numbers right from zero two four six and eight so let's say the digits that i'm going to iterate also although this is not something that i need to do but okay these are the basically i don't need to have this vector here but i'll just have it for clarity sake these are the digits that i'm going to try and put at this particular position since i can put go ahead and put any even digit next up i need to make sure that if tight is one i do not exceed the corresponding digit of r so is tight equals to one if tight equals to one then something otherwise i can go up till nine there's no problem with that i can go ahead and put any digit at this particular position so, but if there is a tight what is the corresponding digit of r so the corresponding digit of r would be r dot length minus n you can check why this is the corresponding digit this would be corresponding digit at this particular position right in r now i'll try putting in the number of digits and let me have my ll answer here ll answer equals to zero try putting in every digit belonging to the vector digits at this particular position as soon as you put in a digit you find out how many n minus one digit numbers are there that blah 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 okay so i put in the digit dig at this position and a recur for the remaining so answer plus equal to solve uh, i'm looking for n minus one digit numbers now uh, the even becomes zero because I just put in this was an even position. So of course the next position is going to be an odd position. So the next is going to be an odd position. So let me make even equal to zero leading obviously will remain zero. And what else tight tight becomes tight. If tight was zero tight remains zero. But if tight was not zero, then tight will remain one. If the current digit is equals to the upper bound the largest digit that I could have put in here then tight remains one so if tight was already one and the digit that I'm putting at the current position is also equal to the corresponding digit of r then tight stays one and that's it this is the entire answer and in the other case if this is an odd position I need to check if leading is still one then there is a chance of putting in a zero otherwise there is no chance of putting in another zero here okay i need to breathe for a second now now the digits that it that i can put at this position are the complement of these so one three five seven and nine the upper bound thing stays the same let's just copy that therefore this thing also stays kind of the same only Just one thing that I'll have to check is whether uh, there's the there's leading equal to zero or leading equal to one. So if leading equals to one, in that particular case, I can put in a zero here also, right? If I put in a zero here, then answer plus equal to solve of r comma n, mm, sorry, n minus one, because this digit has been marked zero. Now I'm looking for the n minus one digit numbers even stays zero because the first position as soon as i mark something as a non-zero digit is going to be in the going to be an odd position leading zero stays one because till now i've only put in zeros and tight tight becomes zero of course and that's it so if leading equal to one then i can put in another zero and recur for the remaining the other case is that i try out the digits available with me and that is going to be exactly the same thing except for the recurrence which is going to be a bit different
Also guys, feel free to ask me anything in the live chat or comments. If you're watching it during the premiere, then you can ask me right now. Otherwise, let me know in the comments so I'll be able to help you out if there is any doubt. Yep. So answer plus equal to solve of. Hmm. Yeah. If I put in a particular digit among these digits set at the at this particular position, then I recur for the remaining n minus one digits. Now my position currently my position was odd, so my position becomes even for the next time. Leading stays zero and tight is obviously the same thing, right? We're done. Let me just try it out. So let's take in string l and r. Okay, let me go for int l and r, and I'll convert them to strings. In fact, not int ll, long long lr, c in l and r. The string and l and r. I'll tell you why did I do that because I'll have to do this l minus l minus minus. Since my final answer is going to be solve of r minus solve of l minus one. Therefore, I had to take in long longs. Otherwise, I'll have to perform that arithmetic on strings, which I'm not good at. Now l equals to I guess there is a two string method two string l and r equals to two string r. Finally, I'm going to print c out solve of um, suggestions. Yep, n digit number. So n is the same as r dot length. even the first position is always going to be odd so even is zero leading yep currently leading is one because if i put in a zero these will be considered as the leading zeros of the number tight is one there is a possibility that i might exceed r in the future i guess this should work let me try it out R was not declared in scope. Also, currently I have not uh, like memoized the solution, so it's very slow. But as soon as we insert in a DP table, our solution will be much faster. I will discuss the complexity. Uh, okay, I am not printing ENDL maybe. Six. Okay, answer is wrong. We'll we'll see why. But let me first print it in the right manner. So answer is twenty five zero zero. Okay, not not expected. <laughs> okay, C in L and R. That's okay. L minus minus is good. String L. Two string. I don't think there should be any problem with two string as such. And then you go and solve for all this. Let me see what the problem is. We have LL solve. If n equals to zero, in that case, I'm returning a one. Okay. So zero digit number. I'm considering that okay. There is one boring number. I, I guess that's okay. And if it's an even position, I'm only trying out even numbers. That is also okay. Uh, since it was an even position, it became yeah, that's good. Mm, okay, it's kind of fun to see people debugging. Hopefully, it is. Otherwise, sorry for this. In either case, I'm recurring for n minus one digit numbers, and I'm using the correct recurrence. I don't see any problem as such. If leading equals to one, I can put in another zero, and I can recur for the remaining n minus one digits. And the first position will be in odd, so it's zero, and leading stays one. Tied becomes zero, of course. 
so there has to be some weird problem let me just check it out so one thing that's definitely wrong in here is that uh, although I have calculated the upper bound I'm not making use of the upper bound I need to make sure that the dig I put in here dig has to be less than equal to upper bound that is something that you need to make sure otherwise of course it's your answer will exceed R so that, that is one problem in here still it doesn't make sense for me to basically why is it failing for the other two cases also why is it giving a zero it should give bigger answers that is acceptable but uh, why is it giving me smaller answers mm -hmm. So it's giving me 632 is that the answer yep it is so it was exactly the correct solution the only problem was that we were not checking whether the digit that i'm putting is less than equal to the upper bound or not that means the largest digit that i can put at this particular position we had to check that now we have the solution we just need to implement a dp table in here so lldp let me have n i think at most 20 it's going to be less than that because 10 power 18 has 18 digits i guess this is also 20 the, uh, the number of digits that I'm solving for sorry this is this was the first thing then we have even even as a boolean flag so two leading is a boolean flag so two and tight is a boolean flag I have this table in here and I'll say okay if dp is or not if this particular sub problem has been already calculated if that means if dp at n even leading and tight if this thing is not a minus one then return the same thing otherwise you have to calculate it and you can see that the number of states in here that means the space complexity is going to be log of r and a few more constants so it's basically log r same goes for the time complexity also it's log of r into i guess the number of digits so that's okay let's just have it let's just say that it's log of r only nearly a little bit of transition time but that is very small yep we're done we have applied the dp also and let's just check it for one final time then we'll submit the answer should be 632 okay one one problem i'm going to initialize the dp table i need to initialize it to minus one meaning that no sub problem has yet been solved And again, six zero zero, which is bad. So I do mem set before solving. Okay, okay, okay. I need to do mem set before calling this one also. So that is one problem. Yep, this should work. So guys, hopefully you liked the video. I'll be submitting it, but I think it should work. So no problems. Let me know in the live chat or comments if you like the video guys, and I'll come up with more problems in the series based upon digit DP. I'm planning like four or four problems, three, four problems more. If people are actually enjoying it, then maybe I'll come up with even more problems. Okay, give me an accepted verdict. Also, sometimes this kickstart takes time to give you the judgment. Oh yeah, we got accepted. And thank you for watching and make sure that you like, share and subscribe. Bye.